OK, joining us now is the uh, Wirral MP and Shadow Minister for Sport, Alison McGovern. Alison, thank you for your time. It's all about more than just a game this week. We're celebrating the great work of football fans within their community. Now, you'll uh, talk about your role as Shadow Minister for Sport, but as a local MP, first and foremost, you'll be well aware of the work of football fans in your community. Massively so. Whether it's the Tramia Rovers supporters that have been out in Birkenhead and the rest of the Wirral delivering food parcels for people who just can't get to the shops because maybe they're sheltering, um, you know, uh, because they've got they've got a health condition that means that, that they can't risk going out. Um, or whether it is the hundreds of sports clubs, including football clubs, that have been keeping themselves together via WhatsApp groups and Zoom calls, you know, that human contact through coronavirus that has been really really challenging for people's mental health it's not of course sport is about running around and keeping fit and winning games but there's so much more to it than that it's the way we build our society so i think that we kind of knew that before but it's been made absolutely clear to me it's interesting that so many of those activities could essentially still have continued if football clubs or or, or, or those people had never stepped into a football stadium but there seems to be something about that sense of community that comes with being a football fan that has galvanised so many people and really drawn people together in a, in a time of need? Well, I would describe it as identity in that, you know, you're, who you are as a person, you, which football club you support. If you're passionate about football, not everybody is, it's all right to not like football, but if you are passionate about football, who you support is part of your identity. So that doesn't just stop because the games stop. And so I think that those feelings have been channeled into positive things. Um, and as I said, we knew this before. I think that Everton in the community and other um, supportive groups around football clubs have shown that that football brand can do a lot of social good. And that's absolutely come to the fore through, through this crisis. Absolutely. And thank goodness those organisations and those fans groups have been there. We've heard there with the collections uh, outside grounds before lockdown, but then the online donations during lockdown. But these are, uh, in many cases, fans providing food and supplies for people within their local communities who without would go without. Yeah. And I have to say, when it comes to food banks, I don't think that we should have to have them. I think that people do amazing work. And, you know, I've been working alongside fan supporting food banks and you know I've seen exactly the impact of their work personally I don't think you know I think we've got to work towards an end to food banks and make sure that people can can afford um, to put food on the table but we need them and I think what happens is that football supporters feel a sense of common ownership of, of our problems because of that it's part it being part of your identity and where they see that we have common ownership of those problems to try and come up with practical solutions and I think I think that's an admirable thing often football supporters get a lot of stick um and you know I'm not saying football supporters are saints they are not um but they get a lot of stick and actually at the beginning of the coronavirus crisis Matt Hancock, the health secretary and other um, ministers were sort of pointing the finger at the sport of football, saying that, you know, perhaps they shouldn't be taking furlough money and they should do this and they should do that. And whether it's fan supporting food banks or activism in terms of, you know, some clubs, for example, have had senior players and former players calling um, fans with dementia because, you know, imagine if you are an older supporter and you've got dementia and you're feeling socially isolated, getting that connection from the football club that has formed your life is incredibly comforting. And so when you see football supporters do things like that and some of the actions of the players, I think really it gives a lie to um, some of the negative attitudes that there are um, around football supporters in general. I'll say it again, then nobody is claiming sainthood here for football supporters. I do think it's worth dwelling on the good impact that that sense of community has. Uh, the work we're doing this week is about sort of shining a, a spotlight, if you like, on on the work and, and highlighting some of the great work that's, go, that's going on out there. Do you think there needs to be a moment when football returns to its, quote, 
normal levels, a, a moment where we can reflect on some of this contribution, because although for many the football has stopped, being a football fan hasn't, and the benefits that football can bring to a community has actually been enhanced in some cases. Do you think that there needs to be a, a reflection of that from the game itself? I do, and I would like to see some changes. So I would like to see grassroots football um, do the thing that it can do really well, which is which is make society more inclusive. So something that's really popular on Merseyside that is a more recent innovation is walking football. And that's really, really important um, for older members of our community. And I mentioned previously, like people for whom football has been a part of their life. And then when they get older in age, they risk isolation. Actually getting people back into a football environment can be really good. So I would like us to kind of look at what's happened, recognise this power of identity and the power of the footballing community, and then use that to try and um, help make our community stronger. And whether it's making sure older people are included, which is really important, or whether it's, you know, we've also seen this massive um, uh, way that football has responded to Black Lives Matters, absolutely putting that message um, in the forefront. And so we can go further on diversity and recognising the important contribution um, of the black community in the game of football, I think we can go further on that. So I would like to see us really um, mobilise um, the strength of our community through football. Do you think there should be something like a, 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 a more than just a game weekend of fixtures whereby we could actually celebrate these people? They could come onto the pitch when we've got the full stadiums again. And we could also signpost to some of those services that you mentioned and some of those campaigns that you touched on there too, be it walking football for the isolated, uh, connections with uh, maybe former players, or indeed how to support uh, a movement like Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I think we could definitely um, do that. I think that, um, uh, my apologies for the bell there, that's just um, the House of Commons uh, starting its next session. Um, I think we could definitely do that. I think we could all kind of take a moment to um, recognise what, what is going on in football. I think though there are loads of volunteering opportunities, there's lots of ways in which people can get involved in different ways. Um, you know, I myself, for a long time, never thought that I would be involved in playing football and then joined a team later in life. That's been really great. So I would like us to see if we can't expand a bit the ways in which people can get involved and really strengthen that community aspect to it. Because whilst, you know, the Premier League, of course, is this global um, thing, you know, I've been I've been in countries all around the world and they've been watching the Premier League and it's it's amazing to see how much people you know people elsewhere engage in in football that's going on in our backyard. But the reality is there's a whole host of clubs out there. Um Tranmere Rovers is the, obviously the one that's closest to me and I, and I have most connection with and see the impact of Tranmere just day in, day out um in the Wirral. But obviously other clubs near to us like um Chester um and uh, uh places where you know right across england there's there's clubs in towns where for some of those places you know they might have seen a real um challenge with the high street with big shops moving out councils have had cuts and actually it's the football clubs that are picking up the need to do youth work or that are giving a focus for the community when when everyone else really has has walked away so i think we could really, as I say, broaden out the way that football is is seen as, as a community influence. Uh, what would your message be, uh, Alison, to those fans who've given up time during the lockdown, even before then, and who will continue to give up their time to do that great work within their community? What would you say, Shadow Minister for Sport? I would just say a massive, massive thank you. Um, people didn't have to go and find ways to collect and make PPE. They didn't have to deliver food parcels. They didn't have to do you know community visits, medicine drop-offs, all of that. So I would just say a massive thank you. It's so much appreciated. And I hope that at the right time, you know, in footballing terms, we will find a really big way to say thank you. Alison McGowan, thank you for your time. Thank you.